Hey guys, welcome to Juicy Tea, where I read out the best stories on Reddit so you don't have to. The funny, shocking, and satisfyingly juicy. Today's Relationship Drama Friday, where we can just sit back and enjoy the tea. Unless you posted to Reddit recently. As per a subscriber suggestion, I'm trialling background music in my videos this week. Please let me know what you guys think. This first post comes from the Best of Reddit or Updates subreddit. Posted by Stephen Allen, 1977. I broke up with my then boyfriend three months ago because I thought he'd stolen $846 from me. I just found the money. I can't say this on my main account and I need to write this out, but oh my god, I effed up. I effed up so badly. I just found the money. It was in the chest of drawers I put it in, but the drawer I put it in had a small opening in the back. I didn't know it was there, and the envelope of money fell down there. I would have never discovered it, but the drawers broke. So I was taking the chest apart, and there was the envelope. It's the same envelope, because it has my handwriting on it, and the receipt from the bank. I have to apologise, but this is going to be so bad. I told my family and friends about this, about how I suspected that he'd stolen from me, since he was the only one in my house that day. No one else had a key, and I hadn't left that room or my house with the money. God, he lost mutual friends because of me. I ended a two-year relationship over this. I just didn't believe him when he said he didn't take it. I hurt him for no reason and then I blocked him. An apology won't be enough. I'm going to contact him tomorrow and then I'll tell everyone else. Wow, I effed up. Yeah, you can't expect him to take you back, but you need to fix his reputation. This is why you've got to be careful when jumping to conclusions. Like, I get why it looked bad, but it wasn't a case of no one else could have taken it so he must have stolen it. It was between, you lost it or he stole it. You could have given him the benefit of the doubt, given that this only happened once, and presumably, he's never shown any sign of larceny in the past. Going nuclear without any hard evidence can be devastating. Update. I'm meeting with him tomorrow. A little after my first post, I logged off and messaged him on social media. He read it within minutes and messaged me back saying, we have to meet in person to talk about this. He didn't want to discuss it any further online and tomorrow's the only day we're both available to meet. I do want to say that anything I post here isn't an attempt to get sympathy or justify what I did. I'm aware what I did is wrong. I'm also not trying to get back with my ex or be in his life anymore. All I'm trying to do is apologize. Obviously, I can't undo what I did, but maybe someone who's about to do a rash decision might read it and realize that one decision can really mess up someone's life and maybe think about it before they do it. After messaging my ex, I then went and talked to everyone I told in person, which was my immediate family and our two mutual friends. When I broke up with my ex, I only told my family and those two friends that I couldn't find my money and that I thought he'd taken it. My family and those two friends were shocked, but they believed me. After messaging my ex, I told everyone the truth, they had found the money, and they were all stunned. My dad was really disappointed. Because though I never discussed it, he'd thought I'd had concrete proof before ending it. One of my friends was livid and went straight to apologise. The other friend's reaction was unexpected. She just said okay and said that she wasn't planning on messaging him. In addition to those people, I've told the guy I'm dating and the new friends I've made just to make everything clear. I asked my family and friends, is there anyone else you told so I can clear things up? My mum had told a few family members, so I called them and told them what happened. They live out in the country and would never meet him. They also didn't really remember. But the general viewpoint I got from all of them was that I had to be careful with what I said, because it could hurt someone. I then asked my two friends, one who said they told her boyfriend and the other who said they told no one. The one with the boyfriend, who wasn't planning on messaging my ex, forbid me from talking to her boyfriend. So it ended there. What I have done is I've told my family and two friends to give my number out if they remember people they've told. If that person wants clarification from me, I don't care who it is, they can call me and I'll clear it up. It's only been two days, but that's basically it. This is probably going to be a long process for me, but yeah, these are the consequences. So I'm doing what I can. Yes, I'm aware that this doesn't fix what I did. I'm aware that nothing I can do will fix it but I have to at least try to make amends. Down in the comments, this guy says, 
It's impressive that you took steps to repair your ex-partner's reputation. I've had friends and colleagues make a few mistaken assumptions in the past, and I suspect that if any of them discovered their error, they'd be more likely to find a justification for their actions and leave the error in place. So even though you won't be able to repair things completely, you'll at least have made some effort to atone for your mistake. I agree with this guy. OP's trying to make up the best they can. But I'd tell your friend's boyfriend, despite her forbidding you to, there's a lie out there that you created. This girl reminds me of an old roommate I had. So I had another roommate who was absolutely insane. I'll add a story about her at the end of the video as an example of her crazy antics. But basically, she badmouthed me to a new girl in the house who immediately started being bitchy to me. Instead of biting back, I figured she'd realize whatever insane roommate had said wasn't true eventually, so I just continued being nice. But oh was I wrong. This seemed to just make her hate me even more. It's like the nicer I was, the nastier she became. And then eventually I realized, if she acknowledged the fact that what was said about me wasn't true, that I was actually a nice person, then she'd effectively have been bullying a nice person. Making her in the wrong. And some people just can't handle the idea that they might be in the wrong. My theory is, she was being nasty to try and goad a response from me, so she could be like, see, she is a bitch. She did deserve everything I've been doing to her and feel better about herself. So I made a point to do the exact opposite. Oh, you have a cold? Let me squeeze some fresh OJ for you. Oh, you broke my stuff? Well, I'm sure it was just an accident. It happens. It drove this girl crazy, but there was no way I was going to let her feel justified in her actions. Kill him with kindness. Thankfully, I didn't have to live there too long. Our last story comes from the Entitled People subreddit, posted by Medizzle19. My parents don't like my boyfriend, so they gave me an ultimatum. Looking for experience and opinions, all are welcome. I'll try and make this long story short. I'm an only child, and my current boyfriend and I have been dating for 6 years, starting when I was 19 and he was 20. We met at junior college, where we started dating, and after that we went to different UCs, but within an hour of each other. My parents met him early on by joining us at dinner. Everything seemed to go well. Then, soon after, we went to his parents' house, who live about two hours from my parents, so that I could meet his family. And after learning about this, my mum told me how hurt she was, that we didn't come to see them too. I expressed that this weekend was for me to meet his family, but it was clear that she felt almost betrayed. Fast forward. My parents invite me up to our cabin, and my boyfriend joins. We take my car because it's already loaded up with laundry. After we arrive, my dad pulls me aside and pretty much quietly yells at me about how it was wrong that I drove and that we took my car. He's the man, he should be the one driving, blah blah blah. This started everything going forward on a sour note. The cabin is in Toho. It gets cold in winter. So my boyfriend wore a sweatshirt with his hood up during some of the time at the cabin. My parents to this day so this is weird and rude, as well as a reason they don't like him. As we continue our relationship, it's clear my parents don't like him, but they can't really give up what I would call good or justifiable reasons. They'll say he's just not a good fit for the family. They don't tell me to stop dating him, because they can't, I'm an adult, but they do tell me I need to keep him and them separate. They don't want to really hear about him, and he's not welcome at their house or the cabin. He's never cheated on me, or abused me, he has no drug problems, etc. Nothing that a normal parent would cite as a problem. Eventually, it became an ultimatum given to me by my parents. They tell me that if you continue to date him, eventually it will be either him or us, and you'll have to choose. Among other things, they tell me that he'd never be an attorney, which is what he wanted to do, and insinuating that he probably wouldn't be much of anything at all. After undergrad, I started working at a financial firm. He graduated from undergrad at UC Berkeley and was accepted to a law school across the country. We were always very serious about each other and made the decision to go long distance until he graduated and moved back to CA. My boyfriend has since graduated from law school, moved home and took the bar last month. He starts work this October and had a contract since last year. They've known all about this. 
Now, six years into our relationship, I call my parents and I tell them we're going to be moving in together. About 20 minutes later, I get a text. It's from my mum, saying she doesn't want to raid in my parade, but this path excludes her and my dad from my future. They say they love me, but they can't be in my life if I choose to be with my boyfriend. I told them I'll never understand. Since then, they've sent me more and more texts saying stuff like, we feel like we're losing our daughter, and this is heartbreaking, etc. And all the same time, including that this is my choice and my fault. I texted my parents saying that I thought my boyfriend and I should come over and talk, that texting about this kind of thing was stupid, and not to be patronising or belittling, but if it turned into a screaming match, we would leave. My parents then replied saying they wanted to see me face to face to talk, but that my boyfriend isn't allowed. My boyfriend even called my father the night of the initial we can't be part of your life text to try and talk or meet up and see if there was any way to talk through any legitimate concerns. My dad didn't answer and didn't respond until over a week later, only to text him and say that they haven't ever really liked him and that he wants to work through it with me alone and that's mine and my boyfriend's fault for not trying to address things earlier. Among other ridiculous reasons to not like my boyfriend, Berkeley isn't a man's college, my dad. Also, one time in college, my professor lost my final exam. And when I found out via my final grades, I was frantically calling her to figure out what happened. My parents told my boyfriend, See, this is why we didn't want her to have a boyfriend in college. They found ways to blame him for everything. The only thing that ever had any merit was that he wasn't working yet. Well, this was because he was going to school to be a lawyer. Apparently marrying someone that's going to make a lot of money is a bad thing? My boyfriend is the nicest, most calm and peaceful person ever, and he loves me more than anything. But apparently their pride is more important than being wrong and accepting him. I guess I'm trying to figure out if this is normal, or if it's as wrong as it feels to me and my boyfriend. Edit. My boyfriend is of the same race as me and my parents, and somewhat similar financial status as well. No important details are left out, I promise. I wanted objective feedback. Believe me, if there was more, my parents would have made it known to me, and I would have included it in the post. Is anyone else confused? Your parents are weird. Trust me, you don't want to date someone that's a good fit for that family. Down in the comments, Mum of OP2 says, There's not a male alive that they'll accept. They want her under their control. Period. Okay. So insane roommate story time. She'd constantly do things to try and get a reaction out of me. For instance, we had a shared bedroom wall and one night there was banging on the wall all night. It sounded like she was literally just standing there, hitting the wall all night. I had a big industrial fan in my room as it creates a lot of white noise. I was living in a uni share house at the time where people would have parties the night before exams. So I just turned this fan on, blocked out the noise and went to sleep. Next morning, she looked very tired, and I was well rested. She made some snippy comment at me, and I said something like, Ah, oh, is that why the wall was getting such a beating last night? She said, I wasn't punching the wall, I was throwing a ball at it. I was just like, okay, and walked off. It drove her crazy that no matter what she did, I wouldn't come storming to her room to complain, like she did if there was even the slightest bit of noise from my room, like me moving in my chair. Some people just live for the drama. I just prefer to read it. Remember, I post new content every day, so subscribe for more juicy tea.